So this is the element, and this is all in here. What do you do for them? You know, high, so high moving, high margin products. What's in it for them? They get more profit. Who are they? It's all in there. You need to, here's the, the example of it. You will need to put this together for your business. Your business <coughs> concept, what do you do for them? How does the customer benefit? Who's your target? Now, how many of you would say my customer, my target customer is everybody? <laughs> that will be hard for you to market because you don't have enough money to sell to everybody. If you're Coca-Cola, you can sell to everybody. Marketing. You know, the concept, target market, benefits, perception goes right into your marketing mix. Most people think of marketing as advertising. The marketing is how you get people to behave in the way you want them to. We're talking about human behavior. So you're going to do a number of things to get them to do what you want. First of all, in your marketing, you're going to want to look at what are the products that I want to sell. That's usually more than one thing. Products and services, a number of things. And you want to prioritize them. The ones with the best opportunity should be a higher priority. By opportunity, I mean either volume or margin. Either I can sell a whole bunch of it. So my opportunity in the t-shirt shops down here selling t-shirts, three for ten dollars. Because I'm going to sell a ton of them to the tourist company. High margin is my Mercedes dealership. I'm not going to sell a lot of cars today, but when I sell one, I make a good amount of money. So you're going to have to decide what products, because if you're not looking at what are the products that folks that you're going to have to communicate to them in the rest of these related to this, which your product is. So it's going to move right through. Pricing strategy. Can anybody name a pricing strategy? You know what works for me all the time is buy one, get one. Oh. I'll buy anything if I get one free. <laughs> Whether I ever use it or need it, I'm going to buy one of those. So buy one, get one is a pricing strategy. It gets people to buy something. Now what it does in affecting the business, different than 50% off, 70% off, a discount strategy, is that the revenue stays the same. So if I'm going to sell a shirt, buy one, get one, and it's $10, I get the $10 sale, but my cost of goods doubled because they got two shirts, not one. If I'm going to give them 50% off, then I get $5, so my revenue drop. So I might use the pricing revenue strategy to move something that I need to get out of inventory. Something sitting on the shelf is worth nothing to me. In fact, it's costing me money. Usually, inventory costs you about 2% per month. So if I'm holding something on the shelf and it's not moving, I need to get it off of there. I might try a variety of strategies to do that. But uh, another one might be bundling. You know, if you get this, you get this, 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 this. How would you like to supersize that? You know, or how would you like to get a good bundle is, uh, what are those things when you order a number two? It's a, a, a value meal or a combo, a combo, combination. So they bundled it, they made a combination, and you bought more. You might have only come in and got a hamburger and a cup. Oh, but I get, you know, and fries too. So they sold you more by bundle. Would you like to supersize that? Now they upsold you. So there's all sorts of pricing strategies. Remember, this is used to get your customers to do the things you want them to do. So I might give you a discount if you come pick up the thing instead of me delivering it. Because you don't lay a cost to picking up. Because you drive your car and you're not. But I know I have to pay that guy and I gotta pay that truck. I know what it should cost me to deliver. So I now am getting it done without uh, having to deliver it. Promotion strategy. That's where you have advertising. You have sales. You have promotional events. You have public relations. The newspapers are dying for stuff to write about. If you have a unique customer and a unique situation in your industry, and you can write it up in such a way that isn't looking like you're doing an infomercial on yourself, 
It's more about little Mary that's 180 years old, you know, just got out of the house because of what you did for her, whatever, you know, and thanks to the staff at this company, and you get recognition and everything. That's promotion. You get the major, the mayor out, the ribbon cutting, you know, at your place or whatever. That's promotion. Having people aware it exists. So many different ways now, radio, TV, inter internet, Facebook, Twitter, you know, a uh, million places. Place or distribution status. You've always heard location, location, location. The more con the convenient it is, people buy, one of their reasons for buying is convenience. So if it's very convenient, they're more likely to buy it. I was in Dominican Republic, we were some businesses down there, and I was at this one government office, we were outside, and there was this line of people there, and a guy standing there, and he had a sign that said, we'll hold cell phone for a dollar. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, what the heck? You know, who wants to have their cell phone held, you know? And then I noticed there was a sign right before you go in the door at the business, at the, at the government building, and it said, no cell phones allowed in building." So they've been waiting in line for 20 minutes. And now they're seeing this, and they're going, what do I do? Do I leave line and get back? And, wait? and then they see this guy. <laughs> he walks over there, gives him the phone, he gives him a little ticket number, they give him a dollar, he steps back, waits for the next guy. Location, you know how much you can sell a, a rain thing at a football game when it starts raining? You can buy it for 10 cents and sell it for $2. And they're happy you're there. That's not a bad thing. Now, we shouldn't gouge people, but I'm happy to give someone two dollars, stay dry, and stay in the game, and sitting there with a drip in my face. And everything. Very key, and this is one of the ways that I beat most of my competition. Is I made it so convenient to use me. And in the medical field, they're very much in a rush. They got to discharge people from hospitals quick. They got to get themselves quick. You know, they've been diagnosed. They need it quick. And so, if you are quicker because you have better location strategies, then you win. And then communication strategy. What words you use, how you treat people, how you, how you talk to them. Uh, words and pictures are very important. Uh, in marketing, uh, I would recommend if you go to YouTube, check out the site The Blind Beggar. The Blind Beggar video will make you cry. But what it'll teach you, which is more important, I really don't want to make you cry, but I mean, it will choke you up. But what it teaches you is how powerful words and pictures are. People underestimate the power of words and pictures. If you use the right ones, then you really can have a lot more effect. Uh, business structures. The different choices that you have are sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation. Sometimes you hear people say, I want to start an ink. Corporation, C Corp, S Corps, party corporation, limited liability companies, uh, limited liability partnership, it says corporation here, it's really common. Sole proprietor is the most popular, that's you, you are the business. It's the easiest to set up. Uh, most of the companies are sole proprietorship, uh, maximum control, uh, less regulation. Uh, this is an issue, is profits are taxed as income to the owner. Uh, profits of corporations tax income to the owner. But where you really get hit is payroll taxes because you get charged as self-employed. Now, there's a trick and strategy that we'll talk about a little later when we talk about the other entities, but payroll taxes can be greater in sole proprietorship. Also, you have a lot more liability. You are the company. If, you do, if your company does something wrong, you are the company. Everything you've got is at risk because you are the company. Uh, financing is more difficult and it's hard to do succession. How do you sell the business if you are the business? You might, you might sell your equipment and stuff like that, asset, but it's not as good as selling a business that has a revenue stream. One of the great things of owning a business is not only can you make as much or more money as you do working somewhere, but you have something valuable when you don't want to do it anymore. If you've done it right, you get to sell it. 